Hello there everybody, my name is Bloomer Brown and today I have decided to take another look at Simple Rockets 2. Uh, this time diving into the mobile version that released a couple of weeks ago after a short stint in closed beta. Uh, now as far as mobile games go, this release was actually pretty hotly anticipated, at least among uh, Rocket Sim enthusiasts. And a lot of people were in fact wondering if it would ever release and if it would be able to deliver on what was promised in the PC version. And I have to say that from the limited time I have spent in with the game, uh, it does seem that John Drew have delivered the game that was promised. Now I do say that with some disclaimers because I obviously haven't explored the game in its entirety at this stage, uh, but so far are so good. So I've decided to mark the release of a pretty successful port uh, with an interplanetary mission to deliver a symbolic payload out to the surface of the dusty red planet known as Silero. Uh, now before jumping into the footage, it is worth pointing out that I am playing and recording this uh, using a Samsung Galaxy A3, which was built back in 2016. And so yeah, it obviously has a few hardware limitations that, you know, newer and better devices might not have. But it should serve as something of a benchmark if you are kind of sitting on the fence and wondering whether or not your device will be able to run this game. Uh, now I will say Say that I cannot run this on maxed out settings because the phone tends to freak out and the game crashes but uh, on the lowest graphic settings this game runs buttery smooth but in order to make the viewing experience a little bit better uh, I have decided to up my uh, graphic settings to medium for the purposes of this video and I have to say that even with the recording software running there is only a small amount of stutter to be seen uh, you know, which I can kind of live with. Uh, it's also worth noting that there is a peculiarity with Android, which is going to affect people who are looking to make videos on this using an Android device, uh, where a recording internal audio is not an option without digging through the operating system or investing in some hardware. Uh, both of which I am not too inclined to do for the sake of a video. And as a result, the game audio itself might end up sounding a little bit tinny because uh, what's happening is that the audio is being played through the speaker and then picked up by the microphone, which is rather unusual to say the least. And the only conclusion I can come to on this is that someone somewhere is making money off it. Anyway, before we go too far down that rabbit hole, I think we should jump out to the launch pad where I have rolled out a simple rocket, which is hopefully going to be able to deliver our special cargo out to Silero. And so out on the launch pad, I throttle up to full and ignite a cluster of five Apex engines that form the powerhouse behind the first stage of this rocket and begin my crawl into orbit. Now sure, there might be a little bit of lag at play here, but uh, I should point out that the rocket itself doesn't really have a fantastic thrust to weight ratio. And so yeah, it's going to be a little bit of a struggle during the ascent, uh, but after fiddling around with this in the VAB, I have decided uh, that close enough is good enough and that I can probably compensate for the uh, low TWR by flying a slightly steeper ascent than I have done in previous videos, aiming to get myself pitched over to 45 degrees by about 15 kilometers or so. Now I of course had thought of using the Saturn V analog which is known as the Simple Beast for this launch. Uh, but I did want to mess around with the build system and I have to say that bar the addition of a few tweakables and some new parts, it is basically the same system that we had in the PC version, which does make the construction process uh, a little bit easier than if we had a completely new build system on our hands. Anyway, with the first stage depleted and a good chunk of fuel burned off in the second, it seems that my plan has in fact worked 
And we are actually looking pretty good with an apoapsis of just over 100 kilometers. And so all I really have to do is spend a little more delta V at apoapsis to kick myself up into a stable orbit, which while not perfectly circular, is at least outside of the atmosphere. And at this stage, we can take a moment to check out some of the cinematic camera angles uh, before turning our attention over to the red planet of Sinero, which is awaiting us many many kilometers away out in deep space and there it is Sinero, the red and dusty desert planet uh, which orbits ever so slightly further away from its host star than our home planet of Drew and uh, as we see also has a little bit of eccentricity associated with it uh, now while I haven't done any calculations on this I am going to just hazard I guess at you know allowing it to be about 40 to 45 degrees ahead of us in the orbit before we begin attempting a Hohmann transfer out to it so yeah I hit time warp and gradually inch my way in until I think that the planet looks uh, to be in a half decent position before starting to plot out a maneuver uh, that will hopefully get us out to there and while you don't have to sit through this process in full, uh, because of course I have accelerated the footage for you, I can say that while the controls did work perfectly, uh, as you can see, uh, I am having a little bit of trouble of finding my close approach markers, which uh, for some reason don't seem to work while I am in orbit of the planet Drew. Uh, so yeah, basically what I end up doing is plotting out a burn that just brings me up to about that altitude and hopefully I will be able to do a mid course correction and pick up my close approach markers at that point. So yeah, with the burn locked in, I basically unpoint the spacecraft towards it and allow time to pass by as we slip over the planet for another orbit uh, before lighting up the engines. And in fact, because of the time warp feature, uh, this spacecraft has actually spent uh, something in the region of about a year, almost a year in orbit at this stage. Uh, so yeah, high time that it gets on the move. Yeah, somewhere along Along the way I ended up fat fingering the controls and uh, basically deleted my maneuver node and so what I decided to do was lock my controls as they were and basically continue the burn. Uh, unfortunately I start to notice that my apoapsis is actually decreasing and coming out to out of the map screen I discover that I am pointing myself down towards the ground in a radial burn uh, so yeah I cut the engines and basically allow the spacecraft to go around for another pass uh, until we get back close to periapsis in order to take full advantage of the Oberth effect and once again light up the nuclear engine that is uh, hopefully going to handle most of my maneuvering in space uh, though it has to be said I have already wasted a little bit of that delta V by thrusting towards the ground and yeah, because of the lower thrust offered by this engine, I thought I might have to go around for another pass, but we do manage to break orbit with Drew, and yeah, I just basically continue to burn out in that direction, uh, just until the orbits kind of line up. And yeah, keeping an eye on how my close approach is going, and it does seem, yeah, that I am not in the perfect position, but it does look as though we are going to get in pretty close. Uh, so I decide to slap down another maneuver node and, uh, you know, sort of start trimming things down and eventually the encounter turns green and yeah we are basically good to go so yeah not entirely sure as to why I didn't have any uh, approach vectors while I was in orbit of the home planet but that issue seemed to resolve itself once I got moving into deep space and so all we need to do now is to zip out into space and allow us to coast out to that first mid-course correction and so after a little bit of messing about and a small amount of lost footage because I started to run out of memory on my SD card, 
uh, I finally start to get myself in pretty close to the planet and at last get an encounter. Uh, it is worth noting that I have started burning into the fuel on my descent stage. Uh, expending everything that was left in the nuclear engine uh, which is a little bit disturbing uh, because I did of course want to keep all of that specifically for landing because of course much like Duna or Mars uh, there isn't a hell of a lot of atmosphere to work with when it comes to landing payloads on the surface and so after passing a little bit of time uh, I do get down close to the red planet and light up the engine to capture myself and no more the plan, of course, here is to keep my apoapsis uh, a little bit higher above the surface of the planet uh, before trying to bring myself down for a little bit of aero braking. And yeah, by testing this out, I discovered that by uh, keeping my apoapsis like this and using it to drop my periapsis, I end up saving about 100 meters per second of my precious delta V, which is, yeah, starting to run really, really rather low at this stage and yeah you can just see me uh, tweaking it there a little bit so that I do not end up crashing into the surface of the planet and so after spending another little bit of time we come back down to our towards our periapsis and uh, yeah we actually start getting into the atmosphere uh, which starts to slow us down and drops our apoapsis quite significantly uh, incidentally this is how nasa tend to handle all of their planetary encounters as well first of all they will put themselves into an eccentric orbit and then over consecutive passes allow the atmosphere to basically slow them down and circularize whereas in games like kerbal space program uh, we often tend to uh, basically get as close an encounter as we possibly can and capture ourselves using the atmosphere and after a small amount of deliberation I decide that I am going to attempt a landing at this stage uh, because of course memory is once again running a little bit low on my phone uh, now typically what I would do in this situation is slightly raise my periapsis and go around for another pass to try and circularize myself a little bit better uh, so that we don't have quite as steep uh, a descent angle as we have here but since fuel is running low and I have packed plenty of parachutes I think that I should be able to make this landing and so yeah I deploy the landing gear hoping that it will provide a little bit of extra drag and we begin our rather steep descent and finally jettison the fairing to reveal the special payload that I am carrying out to the surface and because things are starting to deviate from the preferred orientation I decide to deploy the parachutes uh, while I'm still moving rather fast and still quite high up which for some reason sends the internal Entire spacecraft into a really rapid spin and yeah I do start to get a little bit concerned uh, that perhaps our spacecraft will break up in the atmosphere uh, but anyway as we do come down things start the those effects start to dampen down and we get a little bit of control back our parachutes fully deploy and I start using the main engine to slow our descent and as we're on terminal approach I make sure that my radar altimeter is in surface mode as opposed to orbit mode uh, just to give myself a little bit of feedback as to how far we are from the surface itself and yeah as we start to come in I use the engine to slow myself down and yeah accidentally start uh, overcooking it and end up stalling for just a moment and yeah as we close the distance down to just under 200 meters I start to throttle up again and realizing that I've run out of fuel and end up hitting ground really rather hard where uh, we see a bit of an explosion uh, but once the parachutes get out of the way and the smoke clears it does in fact seem that our payload is completely unaffected and to be honest this actually worked out better than planned because uh, that little bit of litho braking was a great way of detaching the payload from the descent engine yeah so time to get those parachutes retracted back into their stowed position 
I was, of course, thinking about exploding them uh, to take them off so that we get a more accurate representation of the android uh, on the surface of the planet. But I'm, of course, worried that that will do some damage to the robot itself. And yeah, I think I can live with it wearing some, you know, sort of 1980s style shoulder pads. So yes, that was my first outing in Simple Rockets 2 Android Edition. And though there were some hiccups here and there, we did manage to mark the occasion by successfully delivering a suitable monument to the surface of Silero, uh, which will no doubt become a tourist attraction once the inhabitants of Drew start colonizing Silero in the not too distant future. I will of course be trying to put another couple of missions together at some point, uh, but if you are looking to try the game out for yourself, it is currently selling for five euro and 49 cent on the Google Play Store, which I think comes out to about $5 US. And I'm assuming if you're using an Apple device, the prices are going to be comparable. And so with that all said and done, I'm going to take this opportunity to say thank you very much for tuning in. You have been watching Bloomer Brown on YouTube, and I will see you next time.